So one day I run across this LinkedIn post. It says, succession planning is an investment in an organization's future, and here's why. Number one, continuity. It ensures the smooth transition of key positions when employees retire, leave, or are promoted, reducing disruptions in workflow. Two, talent development. It identifies and nurtures potential future leaders, fostering their growth within the organization. And I'm going to go over one more because there are a few more reasons, but the other one employee engagement. It can boost morale and engagement by showing employees that the organization values their development and growth. By the way, this post is in the show notes. So I reached out to the person who wrote it. Emily Anthro is her name. She is an HR communication specialist at Saginaw Valley State University. And I told her that I wanted her to be on an episode of I Want to Work There. Her response me, I don't know. I'm I'm an HR communication specialist. I don't have a big title or anything like that. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, if you remember episode six, we had a discussion about how a title does not a leader make with Vicki Baker. So guess what? Emily is on this episode of I Want to Work There, and we're gonna talk succession planning and employer branding. <laughs> No matter the institution, company, or organization, everyone wants to find the best talent, and everyone wants to keep their best talent. Higher education is no different. I'm Eddie Francis. I've worked in both talent acquisition and higher ed marketing. On this podcast, we're going to explore the ways to create a great experience for faculty and staff on your campus. Because in education, a great employee experience equals a great student experience. And who doesn't want that? We'll have some honest conversation, get insights from experts, and hear success stories from campuses. It's all about developing an attractive employer brand, something that'll make the people say, I want to work there. Emily Amthor is a human resources communication specialist for Saginaw Valley State University. Previously, she served as a director of HR communications for a local K-12 school. Emily has a passion for employer branding. Oh, be still my beating heart. And she enjoys putting the human back in human resources. She wants to show how her employees stand out, not only on campus, but also in the community. Emily Thank you so much for joining me on I Want to Work There. How are you? Thank you, Eddie. I am great. So tell me about the work that you do at Saginaw Valley, because I saw your um, title, HR Communication Specialist. I'm thinking this is very cool. What do you do? I feel very fortunate for what I do at the university. I am able to work with the marketing communications department. Um, Even though I sit and serve HR, I handle HR function, I am able to work with them, collaborate with them, whether it be branding, consistent messaging that we're getting out to employees, or even just making sure our messaging is consistent across all platforms. Um, I also feel like by collaborating, uh, we are able to move more efficiently and how we want to get our message across towards employees. How did you get into employer branding? How did that become an attraction to you? That actually started um, when I was at the school district. We um, had a, uh, of course, I think with everyone, we had a shortage of teachers in Mm. in trying to um, attract and retain teachers. I realized we needed to do something different to make that um, employer stand out. Like we were a small, very small K-12 school in the middle of field. What are we going to do to attract Mm. talent to come to us? And what is our messaging like? And when I joined, that role previously um, had been piecemeal. So it really wasn't a, um, there wasn't a consistent person with other role. So when I joined, the first thing I did was I built out our branding by storytelling, testimonials, um, sharing why those employees love to be there and how they love to serve the students. And then I also networked with our area schools, SVSU being one of them. Uh, and and by the end of my tenure there, I was able to get student um, student teachers coming to apply for our school where we could only have a set number and we actually had to turn some away. 
So not only were we able to attract student teachers right from the beginning to work with our teachers, um, I was able to not only fill all of our teacher positions, but also position us to hopefully retain theirs by the programs and things that we set in place for our employees. Um, and, and again, just really kind of selling more features of what we have to offer compared to maybe other larger schools. Just, just really trying to go on more of those um, selling points that we can offer for, from a smaller school. Okay, so you had this school pretty much sat in the middle of a field, you said. So you're in this remote area. Uh, you saw the need to tell a story. When folks, when you, when, when folks started to express interest in positions, did anyone recall some of the storytelling? Did anyone respond to you or respond in any way to the storytelling that you were doing to brand the, the school district? So ultimately, what uh, some did, some yes, mm-hmm. some did. I think some maybe just hit quiet, 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 but some did. They um, they saw either our messaging from maybe not the district's messaging itself, but then we would have employees. We would almost have employee ambassadors, brand ambassadors mm-hmm. for yeah. the um school, and so they would share our content on their social medias and whatnot. And then before you know it, our content was being seen uh, more widely than we were able to before. And so they actually saw that, you know, so-and-so teacher, um, you know, shared this. That's how it came about it. Um, and, and ultimately, if our teachers weren't willing to share that, or, or not even just the teachers, but principals, other staff, if they weren't willing to share that, to me, that was a message that we're, we're not doing enough. And that if our staff is not happy, they're not going to promote us to mm. try to get other teachers in. So they... Um, I had an overwhelming sense of staff members willing to be brand ambassadors and to share their passion and why they love the district. And then they just continued to get that message out. And so several of our new hires um, did find us through those channels from various, the various staff members. It was either like a principal, they heard about from a principal, something that she shared. And it was, I consistently was meeting with them, putting new content out from the um, employees, trying to, to share their stories and and the wonderful things they're doing in the district and also from a more benefit side what the district can offer our employees yeah so and i I can only imagine that there were folks internally when they saw the stories or maybe even when they saw something about themselves i can only imagine that there were people who had a big I didn't realize this. We really do have something special here. I, I I can only imagine some of the reactions that you got internally from folks. What was what's a reaction that's probably most memorable to you? I would say one where this teachers, I, I feel that they did not see the greatest impact that they were doing. They built this whole program from scratch. They put their own resources into it. And what I ended up doing was getting for that individual just um, student testimonials. And they had no mm-hmm. idea what they were doing and building made that big of an impact to their students. And how, and their students knew they were coming in on weekends and during the summer. The, the students knew they were, he was putting in his own resources into building this. And to get those, I, and maybe potentially the teacher just knew, but like they didn't know to this extent how much of an impact they were making. And then once we kind of got those student testimonials and we kind of sat them together, they had a great story to tell to then showcase to the whole community. And I think that's probably my most rewarding um, just because just knowing how much this person is passionate about this program and how much they personally invested into it and how much the students got out of it. Mm. So let's talk about this LinkedIn post that you did that caught my attention and made me (laughs) grab you for this episode because you did um, a post about succession planning and how it's an investment. And you talked about the benefits of succession planning being continuity, talent development, risk mitigation, employee engagement, cost savings, strategic alignment. What motivated you to even write that post? Well, I, it is, um, so succession planning is another one, kind of like the employer branding, just more of a, uh, not, I wouldn't say as a pa- much of a passion, but just a driver from the HR ones. Um, mm-hmm. when I, when I talk to my other HR colleagues, not maybe just here, but just around the area that I, that I have, it was one that, um, I felt could tie into employer branding, mm-hmm. um, with that succession planning, um, you know, having employees that 
want to work in our organization and they not only want to work there, but they want to succeed and move up. Exactly, you know, I think yep, that's yep. something to look into. That's something to invest into developing internal talent management. I mean, it is putting that work in there will yield better results than external recruiting. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe not in all cases, but from a cost savings perspective, I definitely see that. I have seen that. Um, And that I, and I think from an employee perspective, when the employee sees a path for that, that that again, makes them want to be there. It makes them want to be there. And I just, I was seeing so much on LinkedIn from either job layoffs or I got passed up again for a promotion. And I just saw the, I don't know if it was sadness or just, um, um, they were discouraged. Almost a despair in a way, right? It it was almost a despair. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was seeing those on LinkedIn. I had some individuals, uh, you know, reach out, um, just from not even a mentoring coaching, but just like, can you check over my resume? Like, do you think it looks okay? Like I, I've been here. And so I just kept seeing those stories and I thought, man, I need to put out something about succession planning and just what a great investment it is for an organization to do so. Uh, I mean, the uh, boost employee morale, and it shows them that, that you're listening, that you care as an employer. And, and ultimately, again, they see that path, that professional development opportunities for them exist and that they want to stay at that organization. Yeah. You know, it's, it was interesting about this is um, I had a conversation with uh, a friend this past weekend who works at a university. And one of the things that we talked about um, was moving around within the institution. And I told her, I said, you know, what you do is something that a lot of people don't think they can do. A lot of people don't think that they can move around within an institution. Of course, it helps to have a big institution, right? It, it helps if you have an institution that maybe has, I don't know, upwards of a thousand employees or, you know, uh, something like that. But even in, even when you have smaller institutions, there's still that possibility. So um, I, I think the part of your succession planning message that really resonated as, as far as I was concerned, and also it really resonated in terms of employer branding is the talent development part. Because I think if somebody says, well, I was able to move into this position because I learned this and then I was able to do this because I learned that. And by the time they leave the institution, if they can look back and say, you know, I don't really want to go. I see I have a better opportunity, but because of what I learned, I would recommend somebody else working at this place. And and I mean, from where you sit, how important is it to have employees make those recommendations to other people that they work at a particular institution? Oh, I think it's huge. Um, that just that personal um, recognition and that personal reach out is huge. And I think that shows how positive and it shows our work culture if someone else does that. And not only that, the whole um, talent development piece, like within some um, performance management systems, you can list your skill sets, your area of interest, and and those things are can be, you can make it where it's visible so others can see that, like not only mm-hmm. just HR. So if you want to tap into individuals or if it's someone that you might have never seen, like, oh man, they are a really good fit for X, Y, and Z. Even at a small institution, you can't talk to everybody. So having right. something where you can see other people's skill sets and their passion um, is a way for us to really see, even if it's not like maybe a direct path that they thought or that we thought, it might be someone in a different department that ended up getting, um, which actually this actually happened, like by having open communication with their manager, with mm-hmm. HR, utilizing performance reviews. We were able to see that this individual was in this department, but ultimately they wanted to end up here and they are now serving in that role. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, and that's a great feeling. And then they go and they tell everybody, you know, and and the connections they've been able to meet, they do exactly that. They like, you know, I could recommend so-and-so for this Mm -hmm. and, or I highly recommend that. Or when they're talking to others, they just share positive messages about the university. And it's, I think it's got to be healthy for the institution, too, because you have somebody who's moving with throughout the ecosystem. They're learning so many different parts of the institution. And so when it comes time to ask some pretty important questions, especially people who have been around for 10, 20, 30 years, and they've moved from different parts of the institution to other parts of the institution, 
those are really important people because they can give you a lot of information, especially when there is turnover at the presidential level, when there is turnover at the administrative level. They they have those people that they can tap and they they can let them know, OK, well, here's where we've done this before and it didn't work. Here's where we've done this before and it did work. Or here's why we want to do things a lot differently. Having those people moving around the institution that way. I've got to imagine, and I believe, are some of the most valuable people that you can have. So I'm sure that's something that you get a chance to see all the time, especially looking at those performance reviews. By the way, kudos to y'all for using the performance reviews that way. Thank you so much. <laughs> Claps for Saginaw <laughs> Valley uh, State. Excellent job. Excellent job. Well, it happened again. Prospect Paul is excited about attending your institution but is getting consistently confused by all of the information and tasks he needs to complete to enroll, creating friction, and even worse, melt. You knew this would happen again, didn't you? Which is why you've been flagging the need for a Come to Jesus meeting with leadership from marketing, admissions, and IT to audit the digital experience for prospective students. Here's the problem. You're not gonna convince Mark from Marketing to let go of this precious marketing automation software. Adriana from Admissions just got set up with her new CRM, and Isabel from IT is still working through ticket requests from last Christmas. But what if you could come to the table with a solution that didn't require anyone to let go of their software, while at the same time ensuring a frictionless experience for prospects and current students alike? Guess what, my friend? Today's your lucky day. Meet Pathify an innovative higher ed engagement hub that puts students at the center of their college journey. Pathify sits at the center of your school's digital ecosystem, becoming the single user experience interface tying all systems, content, and communications together. Their engagement hub elevates the information that matters most and pushes systems like the SIS behind the scenes where they belong making it simpler for students to discover and engage with the opportunities your institution provides at every step of their higher ed journey from prospect to alumni. What's even better, Pathify has a mobile experience that provides 100% parity with a responsive web app so your campus app is always in sync. Pathify is a platform that every stakeholder on campus from marketing to admissions to student affairs to IT, et cetera, can equally get excited about. So learn more about Pathify and how it's uniting strategic units across campus and bettering the entire student experience by visiting pathify.com. And be sure to tell them that Eddie from I Want to Work There sent you their way. You're listening to I Want to Work There. I'm Eddie Francis, and we're talking to uh, Emily Amthor. She is actually an HR communication specialist at Saginaw Valley State University. So one thing you shared with me, Emily, when you and I had our conversation a week ago is you have this new president, uh, George Grant Jr., and you shared with me that he values HR. Again, be still my beating heart to have to have a president who values human resources. <laughs> so talk about that. Um, why does he value human resources? What have you seen uh, that that makes you go, okay, great. I, I think we have something here. Yeah, it was um, yeah, at the very same time at the university having our fifth president and um, it was just very exciting time. And one thing that I noticed um, right away is with our HR director, she has a seat at the leadership table. She's on the leadership committee. Mm. She holds regular regular meetings with the president. Um, and, and then this way, um, you know, from what, you know, of course, I've discussed with her, like from this way, it, it keeps him informed, her informed. It keeps communication open. Mm. Um, there's no, you know, assumptions being done. It's just open communication, open dialogue, you know, then between them. And I've also felt that because I've seen that and it's not just you schedule the meetings and then you miss them or something comes up. They regularly have these meetings and are regularly attended. And to me, that shows, and you know, most likely probably to her as well, that like he values HR. He values that time with her. And again, just having that open communication. I mean, and 
our overall, like our HR mission, you know, is to be that trusted partner that emp- empowers every employee at the university. Mm-hmm. And um, by, you know, my director having a, C- a, a C at that table, I feel it empowers her and empowers not only her, but also empowers our whole department to continue on with that, you know, vision and and making sure that we're aligning with the university. Yeah, you know, in in a in a previous episode, um, we had a talk with the uh, CEO of the American Marketing Association, Benny Johnson, and one of the things he mentioned during the interview is when HR became more professionalized in the industry. Um, and and I, for, I forgot about these days when it used to be called the personnel department and and the HR people, as he put it, were the party planners, <laughs> you know, and that sort of thing. So and and I've seen what it looks like. When you have a president, a gap, and then the HR director, and a president is making some really, really ill-advised decisions, that really could have been curtailed if the HR director were in the conversation. So that that's got to be really exciting to to have somebody who is making sure that HR has a voice at the table at the executive level for you. So. There's this campaign that uh, Saginaw Valley State is doing is stand out. Uh, you mentioned also when we talk that you've gotten the opportunity to partner with uh, marketing. Um, so talk about that partnership and, and talk about how you are working to leverage that campaign to build this employer brand that you seem pretty excited about building. <laughs> so talk about the work you've been doing with marketing. Yeah, so I've been I uh, kind of start at the beginning of very fortunate within the role to uh, luckily both that director over there and mine see the value of me attending meetings you know so okay, well that, that every so meeting... first of all let's let's start with the fact <laughs> that the two directors are working together let's start with that okay again again we gotta clap it up for a second okay great continue please yeah so that yes yeah, so they, they they work together they collaborate very well and um, by having me being able to attend some of their meetings that maybe are more focused on the employee employee aspect, staff aspect, like what's going on, or and area, and also not only that, but maybe areas where there are gaps that like I could assist at from that employer lens, the HR lens, either like like the data that we hold in HR, or again the consistent messaging that we're producing. Like we utilize several different platforms for producing out content. And by working with the marketing um, UCOM team, I am able to a make sure we're on brand, we're consistent with our messaging. Um, they of course have like all the logos, all the professional images, everything. So just being able to work easily work with them to obtain those, um, I think is, I think could be one hurdle that universities face is just trying to obtain that information. So being able to access that um, has easily access that has been great in order to move us forward with our branding and messaging. Mm-hmm. Um, from that employee lens. Yeah. And, and, of, and of course, anytime that you have any kind of campaign you want to do, there's got to be some sort of investment. One of the things I'm listening to is that there are a lot of things that you are able to do um, without making, without having to make some heavy financial investment. It sounds like you're being pretty resourceful. I mean, number one, you have your HR director who has a seat at the table. Number two, You just simply and actually, I love the way you actually told me this story before the podcast, how you kind of bothered the marketing team (laughs) and so that you could go sit in their meetings and and, you know, you're just honestly leveraging what you have available. Right. So that's that's what it seems like you're doing. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Like you, as far as, you know, you know, higher ed, we don't have a lot of budget. We don't have we we have to make our resources work. And I am very resourceful and, um, and and very thoughtful with what we do have. What is the biggest impact that we can make out of it? And so 100%, very resourceful for what we have. We do a great job of um, repurposing content. So, mm. you know, if it's information we can share on the website, we might turn those into stories or reels that we could, sh- you know, share, showcase on our, our Facebook or Instagram or, or, you know, whatnot. And besides your time you have invested into that, I mean, that's a very cost effective yeah. you know way to put out that that reach what kind of content do you like sharing what what kind of in, uh, and also what kind of content th- does it seem to you uh that's making the kind of impact you want 
I personally, my favorite is employee testimonials. When I get to do employee testimonials or storytelling with um, our employees, and it's not even just faculty, it's um, everyone. I want to be, I'm going to be very inclusive. I want to make sure we have everyone, like the the, the support staff, our admin, um, maintenance, grounds, everyone, like everyone makes a difference. And I want them to see that even if it's a grounds crew, like keeping up our lawn, you are making mm-hmm. a difference. And by communicating and working with them to build that story out, um, those are what I love to do and what I want to do more of. I um, a Part of our, um, we have a learning and development specialist in the office and with working with her, part of what we want to do is um, to build out our new employee orientation program. And UCOM, our marketing, has did a great video on the whole standout, of course, on their YouTube or our YouTube um, and they did a great video of that, just overall of campus. But mine is more specific for HR that I want to do. Like really those employee testimonials that make somebody want to say, I want to work there. <laughs> and um, <laughs> building building those, those out. I think those are the most heartfelt, warming stories that I think employee or prospective employees could connect to. Just out of curiosity, <laughs> are you leveraging the university level accounts or have you created something specifically for HR? How is it how do you see it working out in your situation? So we I have access to it it's no, I use the university's wide accounts only because mm-hmm. I want to leverage their accounts because they already have a following built. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I, I want to use that. I, um, I had the LinkedIn. I mainly do job postings on there. I, I want to um, start posting our testimonials within LinkedIn, thinking that might be the biggest platform to reach for prospective um, employees. Um, I recently got access to our Facebook, our main Facebook. So I haven't done a lot of content um, within Facebook. Um, and a lot of it more is our standout and for students that, but I would love to start sh- showcasing and sharing um, success stories of our faculty and staff um, on there as well. Yeah, yeah. Link- LinkedIn is going to be a winner. Winner, winner, ch- winner, winner, chicken dinner. Just, just go ahead and count it. But my girl, thank you for understanding and realizing that you can leverage the university level stuff <laughs> instead of recreating the wheel uh, with a whole not- because. This is this is the fight that I've had a lot of times uh, in my marketing and comms directors roles at different institutions. Everybody wants to do their own social media accounts. I think this is my favorite one. Somebody wants to do a TikTok account. And we were just the, the, the Marcom team. We were like, please don't please don't do it because we knew how labor intensive it was to keep a TikTok account up. And and it, it wasn't about, you know, I know everybody likes to joke about having to do a TikTok dance. That's really so 2021. Um, but <laughs> but but one of the things we kept encouraging people to do, especially at my last stop, was let's partner and let's figure out how you can leverage the following we already have. No, you, no, we're not going to give you something every single day of the week, and we shouldn't give you something every day of the week. We actually want to give different looks, but let's work together instead of you having to work really hard to try to build your own following because that is really, really much more difficult than people think. So kudos to you uh, uh, for the way that you have been working uh, with the with the marketing team over there. So I love to ask folks, what's the way forward? How do they see this working uh, as far as building brand ambassadors or employee brand ambassadors? Um, as someone with a background in HR, even having served as an HR comms director at one point, um, you shared a couple of things that you're doing already. What are some other cost effective ways that you can think about or that you've been doing uh, so that HR and marketing teams can partner and they can build that brand that attracts talent and retains talent? So what are, what are some other things that you can think about? To... Um... The one I want to also start is a communication. I, I call it a communications committee. Since mm-hmm. our discussion, I think I might change it to employer branding committee. Um, <laughs> something where I, um, I've i already identified some individuals that I feel would be very strong employee ambassadors for the university. And just building that out and even starting with a small group um, and building our message and what we want to get out. 
like um, even though I, I maybe share success stories, I mean, there can be some as, you know, we do videos of a day in the life of a student. Why can't we do the day of the life of a professor or mm-hmm. of um, a staff member and, and just showcase what that looks like? Um, so those are, I, I feel very like low hanging fruit that we could do that are cost effective, um, mm-hmm. and trying to amplify our brand. And then I also feel it increases our employee engagement by identifying brand ambassadors. And, um, I feel that'll help boost their employee, like boost our employee engagement. And then they can share what they're doing and how awesome it is. And then others are going to want to join. Mm-hmm. And then we have this whole, and then I, feel it's almost the best time now that we're rolling out the stand out campaign i just feel it's a great time to leverage that campaign roll out some employee ambassadors some type of an employee ambassador program and then ultimately i really feel it starts on our employee culture and our onboarding Hmm. and 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 having that built into your onboarding from the start yeah yeah so can i all right so so let me let me let me just tell you i'm going to encourage you to move forward with this with this professor piece. I, you got to okay. get the professors involved. Let me tell you why. Okay. Professors are quirky. They are so quirky and they have some of the most interesting stories and backgrounds, especially when you find out which professors are musicians, which ones do acting or you know, when you find out what their creative passions are, you know, you find out that the chemistry professor is I don't know loves to do i don't know uh uh glass blowing or something like i mean when you find out that they have these hobbies and stuff man it it makes them so relatable and it makes them so much more human than they already are so i say go for it emily go for it get the professor's (laughs) stories you know and let them do the quirky stuff too except dances so yeah so (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the, no, but the da- you know what the day you never know. Dances might work out. They just might work. And my, out. in my, they could they could post that on our Facebook, Instagram, something maybe you know, a little <laughs> content there. Like, <laughs> so I tell you what, um, I mean, kudos to you, kudos to the marketing department for working with you, kudos mm-hmm. to your president for uh, keeping HR, you know, nice and and present in the whole situation. Um, and, and thank you so much for, uh, for joining me on the podcast. If people want to connect with you, how can they connect with you? Yeah, p- probably the, the best way would be through LinkedIn. I, I yeah. try to be very active on there. Uh, so just Emily Ampar, uh, right on LinkedIn. Um, probably the best way, of course, I'm at Saginaw Valley. So if you want to mm-hmm. connect that way or, you know, you can too, but probably LinkedIn. Yeah, I, uh, so I will I will say this, and of course, this whole episode is happening because of a LinkedIn post that I saw. So I will say <laughs> that if anyone, if you're serious about employer branding, Emily is a great person to connect with on LinkedIn, and you, she's a great person to follow. She has great content. She is always pretty locked in on on ways that to on ways to build employee engagement and talent attraction and talent retention and all that good stuff. So I highly recommend uh, Emily and and all that information is in the show notes. So, so um, Emily, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of I want to work there. Appreciate you. No, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I Want to Work There is part of the Enrollify Podcast Network. If you like this podcast, check out other Enrollify shows. The Enrollify Podcast Network is growing by the month with all kinds of marketing, admissions, and higher ed technology shows. And they're jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. There are some great industry voices that you can check out, like Terry Flannery, my good friend Jamie Hunt, Allison Tercio, Corinne Myers, Dustin Ramsdale, Jamie Gleason, and many more. Learn more about the Enrollify Podcast Network at podcasts.enrollify.org. Our shows help higher ed marketers and admissions professionals find their next big idea. So uh, come and find yours. <laughs>